Wallace uh, showing you what was happening after the race as Alex Bowman yeah. catching his breath. And, and I, th I think we have to go back to the chicane move where Alex basically spun Bubba out and Bubba didn't appreciate it and he came over and the Charlotte Roval is a track that will always bring out some of the most worst in drivers because of the aggression on the racetrack. Alex Bowman wrecked Bubba Wallace down the backstretch during the 2019 Charlotte Roval race. Post-race, Wallace walked down to Bowman, splashed water on him as he was suffering from heat exhaustion, and then walked off. This move was definitely a controversial moment in NASCAR. And watch, coming from the left, Hemrick comes over during an interview to let Noah understand he's not happy and Noah's swinging. Wow. The one thing that we have learned in the NASCAR Xfinity Series is that these drivers go at it for every... Ryan Blaney has always been one of the most aggressive drivers on the racetrack. He seems like his temple will boil over in the race car. But at Indianapolis post-race, he decided to spin Daniel Suarez out after being made contact and spun with just a couple laps to go when he was fighting for the lead. I think that if it comes to a spot still open on points, then he's going to get in. But that certainly he's going to look back and say, yeah, man, we did everything right, put ourselves in the right position, and then... At the end, uh, somebody just pushed and shoved a little harder than he could handle. So, DJ, as hard as they worked all afternoon no, afternoon long, you can understand this frustration with Daniel yep. Suarez after the race. Oh, no doubt. I'm Holy smoke. I want to see the replay before I say anything stupid, but he might need to take some Adderall for that one. But um, all in all, a great day for our uh, click and close Chevrolet Camaro Z01 team. Just uh, an incredible experience for me to be able to um, to be here for my first What do you see in here? Uh, he says I cut his tire down. Looks like the same movie he pulled on Blaney at Martinsville. But, um, hey, we edged him out. We beat him, so it's all good. Um, but, hey, we're Daytona 500. Put that aside. Uh, my nerves are shot up right now. The king comes in all mad at me and says, after all I've told you, what was the first rule that I told you to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I lost my breath. And he says, don't wreck the car. And we, oh. Uh, it's funny to see now how Denny Hamlin now owns Bubba Wallace as Wallace drives for Hamlin. But back in 2018, they definitely didn't like each other. Even after this accident and this post-race interview, there was a rumor that they had a physical altercation in the motorhome lot the following week at Atlanta. Regardless, Wallace made some comments post-race, and Denny Hamlin did not like it. Well, and obviously not festivities in a victory sense for Kyle Busch, but Kyle, how do you feel about the way uh, you were penalized for what happened out there? Not a word from him. Keeping his uh, mouth shut right now, guys. Uh, he'll think about it, I'm sure, and have a word for us. It's ago, Joey Logano, you know the history with him and Matt Kenseth. Kenseth, again, wrecking and saying Joey bumped him out of the line. This is him saying and warning Logano after the race moments ago. You can interpret what he's You've saying when the finger is pointed in the direction of uh, Joey Logano. And this was earlier with 15 to go. Kenseth was bumped out of line. Then when he got back in, he was involved in the wreck with Danica. Kyle Busch sped on the exit of pit road to beat the pace car out like a famous Lightning McQueen scene. NASCAR, though, did not have the same reaction that the Cars movie did. Kyle Busch would be brought down to pit road to serve his black flag and his penalty. When he was serving his penalty, he flipped off an official. NASCAR busted him for unsportsmanlike conduct. Bush was then docked two laps, and this is when the entire thing blew up and boiled over. Might get back out. He might stay on the lead lap here. Looks like it was close. Well, he's out in front of the pace car, so it looks like Kyle will stay on the lead lap. Hang on the lead lap. There is the pit outline, and look at the pace car. Now, that blue line in the background, if the pace car is past that, he's drilled. Oh, and we just got word Give from NASCAR. Back, Dave. The 18, too fast. They said we sped to keep from going a lot down. You heard it there. They're going to hold him one lap.
And they actually changed right sides first. Now they're changing the left. Well, I mean, he was going to be a lap down either way. Oh, well, I guess that's a little hand signal he's given the NASCAR official. <laughs> that's Kyle Busch's radio. Remember the uh, little gesture that we had to apologize for? It's going to cost him two more laps. NASCAR is going to pull him in. too hard for this. You're costing us. Park it for two laps. So a bad break turned into a bad situation, and it's gone to worse. The battle for fifth over on the yeah, right side. Yeah, the stand up to him, but they'll show me how far to stand up. How about Harvick, Hamlin, Boyer, all in line right there. The final chance to get into the playoffs during the 2011 season saw one of the most outrageous races with so many tempers boiling over. But the biggest one was Jimmy Johnson and Kurt Busch. Jimmy Johnson's a very level-headed driver and usually doesn't do payback. But tonight he did after Kurt Busch crashed him. This was a fierce rivalry during the 2011 season, and I think this was a turning point in their relationship because after this, Johnson and Kurt Busch didn't have any more altercations. And that's been the first time all night that they've really felt like that's been a oh. handling issue that's detrimental to him, and he gets caught in the back end and into the wall. Johnson in trouble. Montoya also goes around. It is Kurt Busch who's gone around. Brought the caution flag out. Got another car, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Oh, in uh, well. Huh. Imagine that. It's hard came to play together again. Would be. Yeah. He had he had ways to get to it. He had to work hard to My get goodness. there. Took some talent. Dale Jarrett collects Ryan Newman in a crash at Bristol because he was upset at him. Ultimately, this also hurt other competitors like Kevin Harvick, who was trying to make the chase. This was extremely immature by a veteran driver and a great caliber driver such as Dale Jarrett. See, Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, evidently that crashed. Oh, oh he gets in the 12th hole. Oh. Will that be payback? I guess that's a payback. Oh, oh Kevin Harvick. Harvick. Oh, see, now, what, that's what happens when you pay, pay a guy back sometimes. You take out some other guys that shouldn't be involved in it. 14th in the championship standings. Here you see Newman on the high side, and I mean, basically, Jarrett's just waiting for him. Because what happened that caused the damage on the 88 car was the 12 car a few laps ago ran in the back of the 88, and this is nothing but payback. So they both go around they into see, the wall. You see Harvick cut. A group of cars peeling off. Come up. Watching this 20. It's coming. It's 22 chopped right across me. Tell that 22 I'm going to knock his ass out after the race. You tell him. Tell him to hide behind his daddy. He from the third lane. I don't even think he was going to pit. Turn right down in front of me and brake check me. Later next to them two, about 20 back. Just be aware. 22 is catching the 20. Low car with damage here. Still good by seven. Six back. Right with you. In your tire track. Outside. Still down there. Still down there. Matt Kenton just wrecked Joey Logano. He waited on him and was the leader came by. Payback for Matt Kenton. Martinsville sure does bring out the worst in people now, doesn't it? Matt Kenseth won a revenge on Joey Logano, and he got some. He threw Joey Logano head-on into the wall during the 2015 playoff race. This would ultimately end Logano's championship hopes, and he was definitely the favorite heading into this race. Sam Mayer and Ty Gibbs definitely don't like each other. They never liked each other growing up, and it continued over all the way to the Cup Series, but Martinsville was a turning point for them. They were so bad at each other, they got in one of the biggest brawls on pit road that the NASCAR Xfinity Series has ever seen. upset. Harvick is not a guy you want to mess with. What are you doing? Watch this. Oh, here we go. He's over there and got in the face. He's out of the car. 
Neither one of these guys are happy here. Harvick saying, no, stop it. Stop it. Montoya's to Montoya instigate just, this thing Montoya now. Montoya keeps pushing him, and Harvick's not a guy you want to push too many times. Well, to be fair, Harvick is the one that walked over to Montoya. Jeff Burden, Harvick's teammate, gets out of the car, helmet off, trying to get his teammate on. On off in those last 50 laps, how much did the car change? It's just what we do. We come here to finish second. Let's talk about some of the battles. Great for the fans. You were involved with two of them, the 60 and the 6. What's that like for a driver, especially when you're competing for a championship and running alongside the guy that you're running for the championship with? It wasn't no battle. He drove right by me. Combo Toyota was fine, just not good enough. So uh, unfortunately, we didn't win tonight. Thanks, Z-Line, NOS Energy Drink, Toyota. We'll go on next week. Good luck tomorrow in Sonoma. Kyle Busch finished second tonight. No matter the series, Kyle Busch wanted to win. And when he didn't win, he had a brash and unsportsmanlike attitude. Even in his post-race interviews with a great finish, he was never happy unless he was taking the checkered flag. He was extremely disappointed with this finish in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Car has sent the 20 to the end of the longest line for aggressive driving. Yeah, you don't drive all the way across the racetrack like that unless you're after somebody. So NASCAR made a call, aggressive driving. It's just, it, it seems a little bit ironic that this, this is the driver that started all that after the Bud shootout about guys being too aggressive and causing problems. Yeah, a lot of cars missed this wreck. Oh my goodness. Bobby Labonte getting by on the inside. We saw Mike Wallace go by on the outside. Dale Jarrett back in the 88. Check what happened. There's Tony. Wow. Man, oh, well, it doesn't get more blatant than that. And look at this. Up across the track. How emotional is Tony Stewart? This is his onboard camera. A few minutes ago. One driver I would not want to mess with is Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart at the time was one of the most aggressive race car drivers on the track. He would put you in awful situations and make you either wreck or make you have to lift. But this time, he intentionally crashed Matt Kenseth during the 2006 Daytona 500. Stewart had previously made comments just a couple days prior saying the racing was going to kill somebody. So Tony Stewart doing this egregious move down the backstretch really showed where his head was at the time. Push four wide now, four wide middle. Kevin Harvick is going to get turned around. Tell me who pulled those people. Basically, it was like five of them. Tell me how five of them so I can wreck every one of them. It's like a left front tire is going down on Chase Elliott. That f does that every f week, tries to run into you and get a flat tire. F you. Hey, be smart here. 22 points to the good as we stick. Where's the five at? The hell coming out. Nine's coming on tires. He's a man. Give him room here inside. Chase Elliott is being a roadblock for Kevin Harvick. Nine's going to block his ass off of the five. He'll come inside. There he is, even. Still there. All clear. Crossing over. Back in line. Bumper. Kevin Harvick roughed him up a little bit, but Larson survives. Get your runoff clear by two. Coming back to the checker. He will not get to you. This is race manipulation at its finest. Never in my life have I ever seen somebody so petty and so whiny like Chase Elliott did during the 2021 Bristol race. Kevin Harvick got into Chase Elliott as he slid up the track and Chase Elliott ended up cutting down a tire. Elliott ended up throwing a tantrum and did everything he could to help his teammate Kyle Larson win that Bristol race. Elliott was not even fined nor docked any points for manipulating the outcome of the race being a lap down race car. Let's take a look. You're clear. There was the contact. Sent him into the wall. Could that be the payback for Bristol a couple weeks ago? Kyle Busch and Joey Logano got into it on the final lap during the Las Vegas race. Logano throttled up in the middle of turns three and four, hit Busch, and spun him out. Busch would then walk down to Logano post-race and hit him right in the face until a whole bunch of crew guys got on top of him and broke up the fight. But this is definitely one of the most iconic fights at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in NASCAR history. The 22 gets to the white line. Oh, he gets loose he gets underneath loose. him. Yeah, he gets into him. I mean, it certainly wasn't intentional. It's just aggressive driving, going for the position. Kyle, what led to your uh, your anger at the end? I got dumped. Flat out just drove straight in the corner and wrecked me. Any conversation between you and Joey, or was it just the fisticuffs? That's how Joey races, so he's going to get it.
was higher to race than that 44. He just dumped them. Oh, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of conversation going on with that one between Brian Scott and Tony Stewart. I need the driver in the crew chief of the 14 to spend a couple hours post-race. After the race, we've been scheduled for a meeting. Okay. Hey, man. You've made it 25 races. I think that's pretty good. Second place driver dumps, quote unquote, the leader, then black flags ass. He doesn't get the win. You know, if he if he's on him from behind and moves him out of the way and there's no wreck, then fine. You know, he can win the race. But if you're up alongside the guy and you dump him, then um, I'd say black flag him and give the win to the third place guy. With rain looming on the way, drivers were desperate to get every position on the racetrack, especially the drivers in the 2016 playoffs. Kevin Harvick would get into the back of Austin Dillon at Texas, sitting him hard into the outside wall, ultimately ending Dillon's day as he hit the wall and ruined a great finish for Austin Dillon, who has had a miserable season up until this point. Into the wall, hard hit by the three of Austin Dillon. Sliding through the 13, Casey Mears gets into the back of the 44 of Brian Scott. There's contact, he got into the back of the three. I don't believe it was on purpose. It seems like the three slid up in front of him. Harvick wasn't, in my mind, hard in the gas. He was kind of pedaling it. And they just were, you know, made contact. With the hard contact Dylan made with the wall and ending his night, he was extremely upset in his post-race interview towards Kevin Harvick. Nobody on that three team was happy. Even the three team's crew chief, who said on the radio this. Yeah, he, uh, he flat out wrecked it, man. It's uh, right down that number. We're going to Phoenix next week. He's going to have to win. We don't. That's crazy, man. He sucked down on my door tighter than anybody had all night. He knew how tight he was in my door. That's why I got tight and slid in front of him. So uh, he didn't check. He had the opportunity to. He didn't like it, I guess. The Silver Spoon Kid was out running him tonight. So we'll be all right. We got two weeks left, and uh, we just want to come out and win a race. You know after this, the entire team of Austin Dillon was furious at Kevin Harvick. But ultimately, nothing came to fruition after Dillon never put a fender to Kevin Harvick the following week at Phoenix. You could tell that even months later, Dillon was still bitter about this. At the award ceremony banquet, a few days prior to the event, Dillon said this to Kevin Harvick with all the drivers on stage. I'm still was, coming. I'm still guy, coming to the party. Guy, don't yeah. cut him a break. He didn't cut me one at Texas. <laughs> <laughs> What'd he say? <laughs> there we go. What'd he say? He said, don't cut him a break. He didn't cut me one in Texas. <laughs> the three-piece suit is funny tonight. Sometimes. Don't pull a punch. Sometimes that dirt racing gets in the way. Mm -hmm. oh. Direction. It's pushing. It didn't make the turn, and they're three wide. Oh, and they oh, crash. Low. Big crash, and they're still together, and we're still green, not yellow yet. Rico and Quapel, are they going to get separated? Oh, they were connected there for a I moment. Think they still are. They finally separate, and there's some significant damage. I don't Quapel think, is not I don't, happy. No, I don't think Travis Quapel is trying to separate. I believe he felt like Rico ran him up into the wall and he wasn't happy. Anything to do with the wreck, I mean, that's all on Brad, and I'm sure he'll send a tweet out or, or go on a TV show and explain how it wasn't his fault, but he just, uh, he knows better than that. He knows his angle was bad, and he just drove way off in the corner because he uh, made a mistake, and he was trying to make up for it and had no uh, respect for anybody on the outside lane. So, um, unfortunately, we got a wrecked car. Points, they're parked right beside each now, other. Now the two yeah. drivers are going at it, Kyle. Yeah, and, and, and you see Kevin, Kevin, Kevin gets out of the car. Kevin was in the car. Kevin got out of the car to come say something to Denny because Denny was really talking to Gil. Gil did a great job. He listened to what Denny had to say. He didn't get confrontational. He's done a good job for NASCAR to come down out of the truck and get right in the middle of it. Here's Kevin one more time coming back to say something else. Um, and, and this is just, this creates tension not only here, this will create tension for the next couple of races. We know that. I love this, I know, though. This, this, is, this is good. This is yeah. good stuff right here. Yeah. Tempers were sure flaring at Fontana. Casey Kane wrecked Danica Patrick, and she was very upset as she showed Kane under caution. Patrick got out of her car and ran up towards the racetrack, pointing her finger at Casey Kane, showing how displeased she was. Patrick was fully right to be upset after being turned head on into the wall like that at such a fast track like Fontana. It is a very dangerous thing to do at tracks like that. In line with you, pulling inside now, inside 10 only. I hooked her right there, but I feel like she started coming up the track. What did he do? Just turn left on her? 
dude. I mean, just chased her all the way to the apron, hooked her in the right rear. Five, just right rear down the straightaway. That's not good. 